Welcome to Equally Yoked with Miss Mary Lee, where we make the most high our dwelling. No matter what your question or concern, love is always her answer. Welcome everyone to Equal the Yoke. I am Miss Mary Lee. I hope my, all of my listeners out there are faring well during this time of having to be locked up and enjoy each other. I hope you're not going crazy. <laughs> I think it's an absolute beautiful time to bring the family together, get to know yourself, you know, figure out without, with all your free time, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? This is, this is what we've been wanting. And um, tonight, it's a perfect conversation for the timing. I think um, the title is Abundance is Our Birthright. Now, you might be wondering what ha- that has to do with love, but you're going to find out very shortly because when you think about how we're living in this scarcity, right, and having this money enslavement, well, if it's not money, what is it? It's love. It's love. So I have invited my good friend Jerry, uh, Jerry Gomez to talk about our birthright and I'm going to give him the stage because um, I don't want this to go anywhere other than and where however we're going to go this is completely unprompted and organic and you know how I am we always just wing it right (laughs) Jerry is a uh, council member for the for prepare for change he is a team leader a media team leader that um, he coordinates the orphanage for Malawi He's the author of Jasper Wells into the Hidden History, Esoteric Love, and his motto is, stay calm, stand up for yourself, because knowledge is power. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Let me get him on here. Jerry, are you out there? I am here. It is great to All be right. with you. All right. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. So we're talking I about abundance title, is the birthright. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's it. I love that title. Mhm. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a great show, and especially right now, you know, as we're going through so much uncertainty, you know, so many changes, and there's a lot of people who have not been privy to the story, are completely unfamiliar with what's going on, and there's a lot of panic and, and fear out there. So tonight we're hopefully going to calm their fears and talk about something beautiful. So, Jerry, lead, lead me. Well, you're absolutely right. I, I think being this council member of Prepare for Change, and I've been with them for about three years, Prepare for Change started in 2012 um, when a lot of people out there were talking about the galactic uh, shift and the paradigm shift. Um, there's a lot of talk out there. I don't know. I, I assume you do talk about collective consciousness um, as a whole, Humanity has so much power. They've got so much creativity that we need to work on sort of manifesting our, our intentions. And amen. I know your show and amen to that, sister. Mm-hmm. What your show is so much about, what you're, you're so much about is love. Whatever the question, love is the answer. Mm-hmm. There's so much there to, you know, uncover. Life is sort of like this journey, it's this path, and, and we're always working towards that higher vibration. Yep. I, and, you know, I talk about that all the time, how everything is about vibration. You know, how are you feeling right now in this moment? You know, you, we have the power to choose what we're focusing on. Is it the fear and the scarcity and the bills and things like that? Or or are you redirecting to thoughts that actually make you feel good in this moment? Because that's where our power is, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's that sort of mind over matter type of principle. Um, whatever you resist persists. Uh, wherever you place your focus in and your intention in, that's mm-hmm. where you're going to, you know, spend all your time and energies. Mm-hmm. So what we've learned to do and what we really work on is sort of like um, understanding your emotions, uh, dealing with past traumas, and collectively and individually, we all do that. So we're at a period where <clears throat> the earth is going through a lot of planetary type of changes. Mm-hmm. Um, what, prepare for, what Prepare for Change does its whole mission, its purpose, 
is to get the message out there. And if you consider sort of just the timeline of human history, the timeline of some of these hidden histories, that's some of the stuff that we go into that's a little bit different than uh, just uh, a lot of other alternative type of news sources that are maybe uh, based in um, just information about sort of um, different changes that are going on, political changes, uh, countries that are doing different things, financial systems. Mm-hmm. Ours goes a little bit higher. We go into the metaphysical stuff, but then we yep. layer that in with this kind of cosmic sort of understanding, and we're moving into that age. Um, mm-hmm. I assume you, you you probably get into that in, in your material. I know that we discussed that quite mm-hmm. a bit. Is, is that Absolutely. something that that you go over? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of like, All the, like time. the cosmic and, and and talking about our angels and higher selves mm-hmm. and just the fact that you know. Etheric uh, love and spirit and God is all around us. Mm-hmm. So to tap into that, um, we add this different layer that is kind of hidden history. Um, our planet has been under a control system. I think we all realize that. That breaking down of that control system, be it financial, um, be it with political stuff, and obviously with the uh, coronavirus, the pandemic, and we can get into that from mm-hmm. a spiritual type of perspective. Okay. But setting up a, the broader conversation, um, everybody has to understand that there is that sort of control system. Maybe in, in your language, it's like energy vampires, right? <laughs> we understand. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I've seen posts coming from your direction that you have to, you know, be very careful about your own well-being and don't let people infringe upon your your uh, your vibe, your positivity, because, you know, there are people out there that want to glean energy off of you. You know, it's funny that you say that because um, absolutely, that's absolutely true. And for my followers, they'll testify to this. I've kind of changed direction. Oh, yeah. So for the longest time, I would entertain the negativity and show my audience how to handle these negative conversations with love and be able to come, you know, come to a neutral point of respect. But since we're going through this change right now and um, it's imperative that we stick to the light and we come together and we, we don't make allowances for all that negativity, I have absolutely no problem in blocking people. I just get rid of them. It's like, this is your choice right now. Yeah, that's that's really wise to do. Um, Prepare for Change started in 2012. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, when you and I have had conversations a bit about religion and Mm -hmm. um, uh, biblical passages and and things like that, there is so much wisdom there. And sort of the mission has always been of Christ or any of the um, ascended master or the – Buddha, Christ, or Muhammad, they didn't teach religion. They taught the religion that they taught, if it was a religion, it was love. Yeah, so absolutely. The, the whole point of, you know, these uh, humanity that we've been here, 26,000 years is a period of time. The age of Pisces was that span, and now we're entering a new age, the age of sort of Aquarius. And whether you really resonate with that sort of message or you don't, you do have to address it just sort of as for what it is. It is a real type of a thing. And there are people that are out there in higher families, elite families, bloodlines and Royal families that really do pay attention to that type of stuff. If you remember Ronald Reagan, after he got shot, Nancy Reagan literally had him speak to a, um, a uh, astrologist like every day, to determine who he was actually going to speak to. And decisions that he was making were based on his astrological charts that Nancy really watched for him. So that's just one sort of example. That information, getting into the breadth and the depth of that stuff and pursuing that into all these different rabbit holes, that's really what kind of Prepare for Change has set out to do. So we've got a lot of people that really do understand that stuff, research it, and present that 
because that's a part of the puzzle to understand <clears throat> kind of where we're going. And it's actually led us right to this point of time in history where, back to your point, you can do as much work on yourself. You do have to work on yourself a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. And at some point you do realize that you don't need that baggage from somebody else. And, and you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Absolutely. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully you've planted loving seeds and they, I, th- I think you, you might find it surprising. Some people may start coming back to you. Um, some of the people and, and things that were in my social circles, um, a lot of people started, you know, unfriending or not paying attention so much to the message, but I've been really consistent about, we've always just expected that this was going to be a, uh, planetary change or purge of energy. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in that sense, love is prevailing. And you're seeing kind of a lot of people go through this dark night right now, this kind of like dark night of the soul type of a thing mm-hmm. where you have to pur- purge your energies. So it's a big part of it. Yeah. Be, yeah. F- figure out it's who you are, stay on your path. Right. Yeah, go ahead. It's imperative that we stick to our, that true sense of, um, Love, and if it's not love, you, it means you're not feeling good. There's something about what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're worrying about. Something is bringing down your vibration. You have to get rid of that. It's imperative right now. Yeah. You you have to do things that just make you feel good. Well, I like what do you think about that? words? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love talking about. I love talking about words. Um, one one of the words that that reminds me of is. Uh, put together dis ease. Mm-hmm. If you're not at ease, then you're going to be at dis ease. That's right, dis ease. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, that definitely plays into. But I think that you, you know, um, find comfort. Yes, but unfortunately, there's there are a few people out there who hang on to their story, you know, hang on to their experiences, and you know they want others to know that experience. And it's like it's not important that other people know so much it's important for you to purge it it's important for you to to acknowledge what happened it and it's now it's history it's not it's not happening now so right now you got to make a decision an absolute choice to honor only love and love is beautiful love is kind and gentle and generous and you know everything about love feels good so if you're not feeling good you're not doing it right yeah, definitely. I agree. I, I think there's um, a – I've never gone to AA or Al, Al-Anon, right. but I have, I have done a practice and researched a lot of this stuff. There is sort of a method. It was, it's called um, the law of one. And going through uh, these sort of uh, obscure type of readings, it actually is very similar to the process of healing. If you've mm-hmm. got trauma or if you've got disease or lifelong issues that are sort of karmically tied to you that you're trying to move through or to progress, your options seem to be you can avoid it and you're not going to progress. You can confront it. And at some point you have to sort of accept it or forgive it. And, and a lot of people hold on to traumas that they've had from you know, their inner child, a lot of uh, therapists, uh, psychologists will talk about your inner child. It took me a long time to figure that perspective out, but it, it's not really, it's a thing that comes with age and experience that, here's an example, a, a parent has, I don't know, uh, gone through financial troubles, your parent goes through financial trouble or marital type of a, a relationship issue, and you're a child you know, up to a teenager, and you're on the receiving end of negative type of energy, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make any sense to you. And some people can sort of hold that type of grudge for a real long time until you get older and have some more experience. And given collective experiences, you can look back upon something that happened years prior to you. And you have a different filter. You have a lens. You can look at it with empathy because now you might be an older person 
look at mm-hmm. taking care of somebody somebody in your life, be it a, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a mate, a spouse, or your child or children, and you can see, empathize with the parents that you have as adults that, oh, my gosh. I mean, think about people living today, right now, with, with all of the families that are quarantined and at home right now. There's going to be a lot of <laughs> downtime and time to sort of like mm-hmm. confront some of these things. Some people want to be with each other, and some people are are running away from their uh, okay. their baggage, right? So if, mm-hmm. if you can address it for what it is and sort of let it go, neutralize it, and say, you know what, gosh. It is really hard being me right now and being an adult, supporting my family. Where's my next, you know, paycheck going to come right. from? Then you think about your parents and you're like, well, oh, my gosh, I can forgive them. or I can at least see it from their perspective now. And um, you, you forgive them and you forgive the inner child for having that sort of experience that left them with hurt feelings. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've done a lot of that. I've seen a lot of people be successful with that. If you can sort of package that thing up, let it go, then you see things with a different perspective. And that gives you gives you wisdom. So in the mystics sort of journey, you have um, – you, you gain knowledge when you're young, uh, when you're first doing things. You can read books or hear about it from other people or teachers, be taught something. But until you're going through the experience – your book smarts don't really mean a whole heck of a lot. And then after you've done that a few times, then you come out sort of a wiser person. So you got to forgive yourself and let yourself expand sort of on that path. And Mm -hmm. it's a thing about maybe vibrations when you're uh, a vibrational type of person. Right. You know, so, okay, I want to back up a little bit because you did say something that was was very, very strong. And, you know, the idea of empathy, you know, you don't really know until you've walked in their shoes, you know, talking about uh, your parents or caring for your parents. And um, the connotation is negativity, meaning that, you know, it's so easy for us to judge until we get there. And then, oh, my gosh, all of a sudden, it's, we do have empathy for, for the situation, right? And you gain wisdom. However, if we flipped the script and we look at the way Jesus led, led his life, right? And we mm-hmm. made a commitment to walk in his shoes today and just committed to loving. That's it. And let everything else go. Our <laughs> life would be so different. It would be so yeah, different absolutely. because the wisdom Amen. that would come would be um, – from all the the beautiful things that we're experiencing when we let go of the negativity, the fear, you know, and the judgment, you know, um, the equality, all of that. All you're doing is trying to to follow, walk in his footsteps. But we don't think like that. We have to look, um, you know, at each other to our peers and think, all right, well, I don't really know your situation, but maybe when I get there, I'll understand better. But we don't need to see that or walk in their shoes. If we walked in Jesus' shoes and understood that we need to just be loved, then we would be loving toward that person. Whatever it is, whatever it is, our behavior would be aligned with love. And the wisdom that we get from that is incredible. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, 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 it is incredible. Yet that is part of the growth process. You have to attain that wisdom, and you may be taught that lesson over and over and over again until you kind of can get it right. And not everybody's perfect, but certainly take, take, when something does occur in your life and you can slow yourself down, start pausing and reflecting on, oh, that's a negative trigger. Let me just respond with my best self. Uh, respond sort of in love, uh, it really helps. Right now it seems like we, there's a lot of uh, new kind of like planetary energy that's hitting us. Mm -hmm. And that's actually all high vibrational type of things. So that's sort of a deeper esoteric topic that the planet's being hit with a lot of uh, light energy. and, And that's, highest vibrational type of energy, that's love. 
So you're just going to have to naturally start vibrating at that um, mm-hmm. rate. A lot, of, yeah, a lot of people are sort of experiencing this right now. Maybe they ask themselves, they call that those ascension sort of uh, symptoms where you may feel really tired um, during, during uh, this emergency state that we're in right now. I've I recently gone it. out. Yeah, well, I've gone out shopping, right? And yeah, you you might think that people would be very panicked and stuff like that. They have every right sort of to be, but I kind of found the opposite. I found everyone's really, you know, um, and maybe it's just around me, but uh, this area, people are not, pretty chill with things. Yeah, being I think right me now. too. I think. Yeah, I think people are very accommodating. It's like we're all in this together. It doesn't matter where you are. We're all in this together. So we better, you know, <laughs> come together as one and support each other. Don't yeah, you think? absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. If there's one big message to get out to people right now is, you know, you have to love one another. You have to treat others. The golden rule, right? Treat others. as mm-hmm. Treat treat yourself or want to be treated yourself. So, you know what's interesting though that, is that I have seen videos of people, you know, abusing elderly or just, you know, peers fighting in the store over a roll of toilet paper and just doing absurd behaviors, right? And and I'll stick to this. I do not um, witness any of that stuff, and literally because everything is in a plane. And when you make the most high your dwelling, you rise above all of that to where it's not your world. You know, and that's where we all should be aiming to be higher. Aim higher. And and Amen. God says, I'll I'll command my angels, lift you up. And when you get that high, you literally are you just don't see all that stuff that's going on. It's like living Jerry Springer. You don't see it. You know, I, I I agree with you, and I, I think there's different ways of looking at that um, in in that energetic sort of sense. You you create sort of a field around you that you emanate, and it's yeah. kind of aura type of a thing. And if you're very you know resolute, and you know what you're about, and you're living in that loving space, that higher vibration, that it, it, this is this is kind of like the law of attraction concept, right? Yep, you, totally. Like attracts like. If you're putting out a lot of positive vibes, you're going to kind of get that back. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. I, when I was at the store one of the first days before, I think now they've got um, times that elderly people can shop early. But there are some elderly women, women at the store. Uh, I guess my local store is Vons, and it's a pretty big one. And it just seemed like a chaos going around, but it was controlled chaos. But some of these elderly women were walking through there and I, and I would help them or just say hi to them and smile at them and help them grab some stuff. And you just felt this incredible, like gratitude and sure. it made me feel very hum- humble. And I think to live in that type of space is, is kind of a blessing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, you, mentioned, um, you mentioned one thing I, I wanted to touch on, which was the idea of <clears throat> having faith. Mm-hmm. I've, I've found that uh, tie it back into your thought too. Of there are people out there that are acting kind of crazy. You have people want to have. They they say I want to see it to believe it. You're right. But I think the mm. I think the opposite is actually true or true. That is the you truth. Have to, <laughs> you have to believe it to see it. <laughs> Absolutely, amen. You have to yeah. You have to believe it long before you ever see it. So if you keep believing what is in front of your eyes, that's all you will ever experience. Mm-hmm. Especially that, if you're that, looking to the negativity. Yeah. If, unfortunately, that Jerry Springer world, you know, since we are home today, I, we caught a little bit of, I don't know, the Wendy show or something like that. And, mm-hmm. oh, it, it's tough for me to go through those type of things, but um, I, I look for the humor on the bright side on, on that type of stuff. But, you know, we have for a long time, I think people realize that we can expect better. We're looking at government to solve problems right now. And we have to, among ourselves, 
create that change. We have mm-hmm. to vibrate higher. And yep. when you're, you know, partaking in that stuff, it does sort of dumb you down. That's why definitely mainstream, mainstream yep. shows are, are called programming. It's, it's a programming. Absolutely. And then, you know, in a bigger picture, you're just playing into that sort of slave mentality. You really have to work to get out of that space. Absolutely. You have to turn it off. Quit allowing the media to program your mind into believing what is true. The only thing that is true is what you believe. Right? You can manifest, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, well, well that, that's actually one of the, thank you, that's kind of segue into that key, key saying, abundance is our birthright. Mm-hmm. Oh, we do so much work on, on that. And I, I don't know what it ever was in me to stick up for other people. I'd always, my, my whole life, I've, I've been more apt to defend somebody than my own self. So I've, I've always been this giving type of person. But I'm, I'm a strong person too. I'll definitely, you know, defend myself. But I think people are out there sort of wandering around and they have accepted sort of this programming. And <clears throat> what we try as an organization, Prepare for Change, what I try to do on my path, and uh, the book that I've written, it's all about this. It's, it's about seeing things more really for what they are. Yes, if there's a Jerry Springer type of audience mentality that's out there, that is what it is. Mm-hmm. But you as a person have to get, in, we all have to get into this place where it's almost like the constitution, the most basic premise of the constitution each of us has an inalienable right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. We're all really literally born into this experience on this planet, which is a living being as well mm-hmm. that's supporting us, mm-hmm. that wants us to provide everything for us. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, programming tends to put you into this little hypnotic type of state where you know you're not treating yourself as well as you should treat yourself when 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 your a child is born into the world their first 7 years they're just so innocent and they're sponges and they're much more connected to what's right and what's wrong and it's almost like an instinctual type of a thing but you, we go into school and then we see sort of um, the other side of things and, and we just kind of get led down that path of programming. And that's mm-hmm. kind of a, a deceitful type of a lesson. So your birthright is abundance. Your birthright mm-hmm. is love. Your birthright mm-hmm. is positivity. And over time you start letting go of those rights. And I know, you know, very well, kind of the more technical ways that the financial system and governments kind of work. But mm-hmm. without even getting into that, just understand that there are other people that are deceitful out there and the, the argument becomes, are you more in service to yourself or are you a person that's more in service to other people? And what I found is if you just sort of live your life a little bit more considering other people, we really have to get to that place, then that's really going to solve a lot of, you know, sort of the things that we stress about and worry about. And right. that time's kind of here. And let's, you know what, let's clarify that a little bit, though, because I know that there's a lot of people out there who think that they do a lot for others, right? And that's all fine right. and good. But if they have not done for themselves, it's almost wasted energy. Because we carry so much pain, damage, misunderstandings, and um, confusion about what we're supposed to be doing. We haven't worked on ourselves. So if I haven't worked on right, myself, right. and I, my, yeah, if I'm all full of, you know, let's just say this black cloud, how am I going to purely, innocently, and correctly love another? Can't. 
Yeah, it's it, it's gonna be hard because it's like when you have a child, that child mm-hmm. is a mirror of right. you. Right. When yeah. we're you know angered by other people, a lot of times it's because they're reflecting back to us something that you know we don't like in ourselves or something that we know we should sort of fix, but but we kind of don't do the work. It, it takes work, you know. They say relationships. It's what makes a successful relationship? That's it's right. work. And and mm-hmm. God, I guess you should look at yourself as the the, the most long standing relationship you have with anybody is yep. the relationship that you have with yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. You know, and that's your highest self, and you know that that's God. And sometimes you know there's a disconnect between our con- our conception of uh, or understanding of self, the physical being with this higher being, being God, you know, it's like, where's that connection? And you lose it. So you don't hold yourself accountable, but you got to bring that, that thought process of this entity in this guy and bring it down on into you and realize that's what you're loving. That's what you're honoring. And you have to hold yourself accountable because you represent so your behavior, your words, your thought processes, if they are not in line with love, then pretty much a disgrace to what you really are. And this well, you're is how we love ourselves. Living, yeah, you're mm-hmm. not living up to your potential. You're not That's living right. you're not living up to the to the gift of life that you've been given. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I I'd like to think that um every single life and everything that's living is intentional. God is great. God has created, or the creator has created this whole creation. And you're actually a very uh, potent part of that creation. So what you do is really, really, really valuable to it all working because you're a valuable part of it. it if, if you're born into that, it's intentional. I think that's something that goes back to the golden rule. Treat others as you would treat yourself. Treat nature as a loving bit mm-hmm. of God's creation. Um, and treat the environment well. Um, all those notions are notions about kind of interconnectivity. So it's all part of the creation. The creation is everything. You're mm-hmm. in it. So you are of it and Mm -hmm. having that understanding sort of changed my notions of um you know honoring myself honoring creation and realizing that you know you've got to work on yourself when you're working on yourself you're making yourself a better person back to that energy that you shine out that energy that you radiate when when you're Mm -hmm. carrying a lot of light and love and you're being an example for other people, and you're honoring, uh, you're honoring sort of creation, you're honoring God. That's right. That is absolutely right. You know, when we think about being, you know, the highest creation, right, and you kind of take it for granted, it's like, all right, yeah, that's true. You have a brain, and I can walk around, do some things, and create. But, but really, think about the alternative. You were not born a sloth or a dandelion. You could have been. It's all part of God's green earth and creation and goes on and on and on. You could have been anything, but you have life here and you have a purpose here to create. You are a creator. You're not just part of the landscape. So by not understanding what your gift is and pushing yourself to deliver it to others, you're doing yourself a a disservice and not respecting the life that's been given to you. (laughs) <laughs> right. That's really well said, Marilee. Thank you. And so and so true. If you're not – and it doesn't have to be a super big thing, I think, individually that people do. It just has to be the thing that, you know, you thrive on, the thing that does make you happy. If you have joy, then you're going to pass that joy around to mm-hmm. other people. Your joy could be in, you know, um, crafts. It could be in arts. Uh, it sure. could be sort of in, in politics or it could be a, a broader type of thing. Teachers, you know, my wife and I were sitting 
watching some reports right now, and they're talking about sort of the budgets that can't be passed. Mm-hmm. Right now, pol- politics are standing in the way of putting people first. Right. And we're just mm-hmm. like, you know, there's, they stand up there and they talk about, um, oh, we have to honor teachers and first responders and the healthcare professionals. And, you know, people that are on the front lines right now in the coronavirus thing are people that are just showing up at the grocery store and letting you buy, you know, checking your groceries. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that person's just as vital to keeping the whole system going as anybody else, you know, and, and what was the, what was the big thing that everybody was rushing to the store to buy, right? Toilet Toilet paper. paper. (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand. I know it's crazy, but if the, uh, if the sewer system backs up, then we're all screwed. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You so know, it's it's kind of funny because I just cannot wrap my head around that. It's like, what what were they thinking with this toilet paper thing? And you know, in here in my family, it's like we need more parsnips. All of a sudden, we have a thing for parsnips. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. chili paste. I need that. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I think it was, think it was a, a a safe reason. It was kind of like a safe word. It was a safe reason to get people to the grocery stores to stock up on something, you know, think of it this way, rather than saying, Oh, you're going to be quarantined for two weeks to a month or whatever. And uh, we're a little bit concerned about food. So go stock up on food. People would have gone crazy and, and excuse the word, but people would have lost their shit. if Mm -hmm. That was, if that was the word that came out rather than, Hey, go stock up on toilet paper. So, you know, <laughs> is that how it came out? Cause I really don't know. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, think it, it, that it wasn't was how it came out. I don't know how people made that connection. Isn't that weird? Do think you? about that. Yeah. For, for a little bit, because, and, and that goes back to that thing that I think higher vibrations and love are, are helping people kind of cope with this right now. And mm-hmm. People like you, people that are doing your work, have done your work, that are putting out this message, the message of love, Um, our organization, the work that we do, um, coming on to the show and doing other shows and having other shows and interviewing other people, I do that as well. It was all to get information out to people over the last few years that a strong core of people can uh, influence the mass of people. Again, back to that idea of you're you're a part of a bigger thing. Mm-hmm. If there was a sta- a stable and calm, higher vibration group of people that weren't panicking at this time, and and you could credit that to, I don't know, the Q movement, that, yep. that intelligence movement, That's right? right? It it's been seeding a bunch of information. So people have been getting that information for two years. They've been able to process that information because a lot of it really, really changes your self-empowerment. It it changes that abundance of our birthright concept by exposing some of these criminal corrupt people for who they are and the message that they've been, you know, perpetrating on humanity that woke people up. And those people that were getting that message were able to be very, very strong in their work, the work that they did, put put them in this place of a higher vibration. And so when everybody else was, like, sent out to go get um, toilet paper, somehow it, like, sort of carried over to them that, you know what, these other people are stocking up food, but they look really calm about it. They knew it was coming. So mm, maybe I better stock up on some food too. I, I mean, I think that's part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of interesting what is going on. People panic. They think of the worst. And then, um, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but for my own family, you start to acclimate and, you know, we're enjoying our time together and sitting at the table, all of us, and it's not like a train station going in and out. You know, and all of a sudden we're like we're trying new foods and finding out things that we love and we laugh about it. I mean, it's it's a beautiful time. And, you know, it's funny. How are we going to go back to the way it was after just having so much love and family time and, and time off to read and write and catch up on things? <laughs> it's like, you want me to do what? I don't want to work. 
God, I, you know? well, I, I, I'm I'm right there. I'm right there with you. And hopefully, hopefully, we are gonna. This is the new di- the new paradigm. Yes. Hopefully, this plays into it. And and you and I, I know we know about sort of the the global uh, currency reset ideas. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you talk about that on your show. I think probably you do, but. Um, actually, I don't. I don't really talk about that too much. My whole focus is really ter- teaching people how to love. You know, it's like once you raise your vibration, then you'll be more, more open to the rest of it. You know, baby step. But yeah, I'm not opposed to talking sure. about it. Mm-hmm. Well, don't, without going into a deep, deep detail on it, here, here, here's one way that I, I've brought it up with even my my wife, who's wants wants to know in reality what's going on the um like fed and is a private is a private corporation and central banks are privately owned so they're out to make money they're out for profit mm-hmm. they've created this system where they loan countries money and at interest and so everybody that you hear talking about oh we have debt we have debt we have debt um in a biblical sense there is i think it's uh leviticus um, what is it? Twenty-five, uh, four a passage like that. That talks about, and I'm probably wrong about the number, but it does talk about debt jubilee. So yeah. there's it's a it's a biblical concept that those that were given sort of right to rule do provide a government for everybody and. That government has um, uh, collects tax to operate the government to provide the things for the people. At a point in time, it does have to be reset. So we're at that point of, point in time. If um, understanding knowledge kind of sets you free, truth sets you free. Mm-hmm. Understanding that there's a financial component to what's going on right now and has been going on over the last three years in this country and around the world, the bank system, just that Fed, has enough money that they've made over the years that they can just close up shop and call it a day, and they still have trillions of dollars. So my, yeah. my hope is my hope is, you know, that this there's intervention, be it divine intervention, but even in a practical sense, those guys have plenty of money to fund all of these relief programs that we're talking about. And that's the reality. So our, our group goes into those type of things. Again, that's prepare for change, prepare for change.net. If you're interested in that type of information, it's it's Mm -hmm. certainly out there and you know, you just have to keep kind of looking for it, but believe that even the idea of abundance um, has an element of spirituality to it. And if you're talking about spirituality, the highest states of being are states of love. So mm-hmm. if, if if God were a benevolent creator, he's creating abundance for everybody and ways to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Those vampires, energy vampires that we talked about earlier, those are – sort of materialistic type of goals, material meaning a physical versus spiritual. Spiritual is the belief in higher energies and spirits. So those two things do have, you know, uh, a, a polarity. They have a positive aspect to it and it's got a negative aspect to it. So the whole planet and universe has positive and negative and they just sort of jostle with each other and, and we're at a period where the balance has to go back into the positive side so spiritually the negative beings that are here controlling that system and you know even dealing with this virus thing will correct themselves and they will become balanced again um, mm-hmm. I did want to mention this idea as a hopeful notion for the coronavirus as well mm-hmm. in in this spiritual type of evolutionary battle that's happening if you look at yourselves as a, a being you've heard me say the organic being speech before that we are yep. flower, flowers in a field that are, are um, waking up and teaching others how to 
follow us, right? How to lead. So you're a leader, yep. I'm a leader, your your listeners are leaders. They're exploring the highest energy that's out there, love. Right? So that's the top yep. of the pyramid. If there's a pyramid of emotions, it's at the top of the pyramid. Um everything wants to move toward t- towards lightness and towards love, the mm-hmm. highest ideal. And we as a body the size that we are, we have a lifespan. The, the, the planet has a longer lifespan. The galaxy solar system has a longer lifespan, and the solar system has even a longer one. So those are big, big, big cellular systems. This virus thing is a very small cellular system. For sure. It wants to correct itself. We get sick, right? We get sick and we get viruses. And, and like we were talking earlier, we get a trauma and we want to try to evolve and, and, and absorb that trauma and release it. At a cellular level, this virus thing is doing the exact same thing. It wants to return to its natural state of being, which is a creative state of being. It always is moving towards the light. And the reason that there's almost evidence for God in creation is that the universe is infinite and time is, we've been here for so long that everything is always creative. Everything is always moving forward. So it's not like, I don't know, this is my belief. I don't think the universe is going to like suck back into itself. I just don't Mm -hmm. buy into that concept. I think we're just always ever expanding and we just don't Always even know expand. what infinite infinite is. Maybe we cycle back, back and forth. But applying that concept to this virus thing, I, I think we're going to be okay. And it's I because it's such a you. small thing, its life cycle is very quick. So it's going to figure out how to evolve and get back to its natural state pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Plus, if we go back to the lesson of um, seeing what you believe, why are you believing in this virus? Why? Why bring that into your universe? You haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, you don't have to believe in it. It's not for you. Bless it and release it. You don't have to be subject to it. It's just something in another universe. And it's not being insensitive to, you know, others that are being affected and stuff because we can't believe that either. The media sensationalizes everything in their programming. And so, you know, I wanted to, to go back to a point you made about truth. You know, uh, you know, the truth will set you free. So what I teach, you know, and everywhere <laughs> is that there's only one truth, and that truth is love. And if it's not love, it's not true. It's part of the illusion. So you have to use discernment in everything that you do and see and, you know, you're trying to understand. Ask yourself, is this love? Or not. Because the closer you can align with love in everything you do, it will set you free from the illusion, from the pain, from all this nonsense and programming that the world is subject to. We don't have to be a part of that. You can rise. Live in the castle. Live in the castle where love is. And people think, oh, I don't know, Merle. I don't know about your unicorns and things, but it's, it's the truth. This is how I live. And I wouldn't be, I mean, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't be promoting it if I didn't believe it and if I didn't uh, live it. I think, I think you're right to, to a massive degree. You know, it's, it's, it's the thing that sort of helps me through discernment is one of the things that I picked up on what you said. When I, I you deal with a lot of interpersonal relationship and I'm talking about sort of this um, announcements and, and, and what's coming out. Truth has resonance. So if what you're hearing right now out there in a macro uh, sense or in a micro sense, if it resonates as truth, then it must be coming from a, a place of love. Mm-hmm. And when, when you're in, Interpersonal relationships, um, the you're, you're, it's it's just a natural thing. It's like what I said about kids before. Kids and pets, animals, they seem to naturally sense 
Yep. Um, they are loved. When, when something's not being genuine. So mm-hmm. they sort of are loved. They're, they're, they're full of that stuff. And, and they're going to, again, law of attraction, they're going to attract to something that's just like them. Naturally, they don't want to be around something that's going to uh, cause them any negative, you know, negative loss. We start losing that mm-hmm. confidence where we should just like move on and, and go forward. Um, but I don't know. We just sort of get conditioned and programmed, you know, some of the choices that we make in our entertainment and what we read or people that we follow, if, if they're saying things that are um, kind of negative based, make, make note of that because it eventually it's just like a battle type of a thing. And it is perception becomes reality. The more that mm-hmm. you accept that in, the more you're going to become, you know, influenced by mm-hmm. that. And at some point maybe you become a victim to it. So you do have to claim your, your independence. You have to claim your space and be work really hard on staying in that space of higher vibration and staying in that more loving space and, and then right. forgive people that aren't, aren't in that space, but realize Absolutely. it and know that you're, you're worth it for sure. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, so speaking of that in the gospel of Thomas, you know, Jesus said, before you were born, you were one. And then when you're born, you become two. And what will you do? And sometimes that's gibberish to a lot of people, but literally what that means is that when you are born, you become two because you're of the spirits and you're of the flesh, which holds your ego. It's giving you right. free will to follow one or the other. So will you be true to yourself and go back, chip away that ego at all costs and go back to the spirit of where you came? When you vibrate at that level of of pureness, just love with all your decisions, that's when you become one with God, with your highest self. And what happens is just miracles. And that's what Jesus talks about, miracles. It's the most beautiful life that you can experience if you would just believe it. You know, make a commitment that in everything you do, see, um, believe, is going to be for the goodness. And if it's dark, if it's ugly, if it's, it's counterproductive or contrary to love, ignore it, delete it, block it, get it out of your way. And take <laughs> responsibility for your vibration. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. super great. That's super great. Do you ever uh, try writing, writing down words? Um, of of you know things that you accept, things that you're not going to accept. Sort sort of make mm-hmm. make that list for yourself. I think I've done that type of practice before, where um, I, I actually do have a chart where um, words like greed or jealousy or avarice or worry mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. sadness, depression those are sort of on one side of the sheet of paper or they're at the like bottom base uh, vibrational emotions. Mm-hmm. Whereas joy, peace, ease, happiness, love, acceptance, mm-hmm. understanding, the, the, the positive words, you know, those really come right. Me. So that it sounds like something that came from power versus force, right? And we're trying to move up that scale from the negativity of sadness and depression and self-loathing and, you know, and just things like that into a higher vibration of joy and love and gratitude. It's true, but we have to be able to recognize when we're down there. If you don't feel good, if you're not feeling happy, if you're focused on your, you know, your past, your experiences, the injustices, the world at large, what's wrong with everybody else? Why can't people be nice? If you're always focused on them and your past, you're not in the present and you're not vibrating at your highest. And if you're not vibrating at your highest, you will not see miracles, period. You want to get that? I, I like it's that. It's magical. I like that. I, I lo- yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I love the idea of the present because a lot of people live in the past and there, there's, there's some great quotes about that. I, I, I think 
something about being in the past and being in the future. If you're thinking too much about your future or your past, you're kind of creating anxiety for yourself. When you're in the present and, and your whole life are just snapshots of the present. So at this present moment, I'm as, <laughs> I'm as happy and exactly. joyful and loving no as I can be. There's no in the present. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, there's not. It, it, being around you, barely, you're always raising a vibration. So I'm always, always <laughs> raised up to the higher highs when we're able to talk and be with each other. So you mm-hmm. radiate very, very high energy that way, and it's it's great. Thank you. So accept it. I mean, I, there's been so many times I've uh, had conversations like this with people that it's just like, well, are things good right now? So check that off your box because things are about as good as they could be right now in this present. The stuff that you're thinking about tomorrow, should I go out or do that type of stuff? That's worrying about something in the future that you just sort of can't control right now. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I like what you said. Yeah, go ahead. No, I, I'm just thinking just that. I mean, scenarios where, you know, wherever you are in your place, Right now, in this moment, in your chair, listening to this radio show, whatever, you're looking around and think, if you're worried about, let's say, a bill that's due, right, in this situation, if I ask you, what is the problem, and you tell me there's a bill that's due, I'm going to say, where is it? Where is it? Where is the proof? Where is it living? Where is it moving? The only place it exists is in your belief. Just stop believing in it. And some people may think, that's crazy, Marilyn. That's irresponsible. I have responsibilities. I take this seriously. And it's like, well, that's your problem. Because you don't believe in miracles. You don't believe in the magic. You don't believe in something bigger than yourself to bring an answer when you need it. Your sole responsibility is to vibrate at your highest in this present moment. Stop worrying about everything else. It's wasted energy. You have to just move, shake your body, get somehow or another. You got to be responsible and, um, you know, just literally bounce around or something. Stop thinking about things that you can't control right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly don't don't obsess about that because uh, what what again what resists persists. If, if you mm-hmm. keep resisting that moment of now and, and you're thinking about these anchors, they're just sort of like anchors that tether you down. I, I, I do think yes. it's, it's probably worth it to chart out, a, chart out a plan, spend a little bit of time on it, but don't obsess about it because that just is going to create an anchor and you're never living in, in the moment. And you do have to believe and you do have to ask the universe, ask God to help figure these things out. Those are when miracles happen, and, and it's after that's the affirmation. It's like, wow, all of a sudden this thing turned out okay for me. And and, <laughs> and you're survivors. I mean, everyone's a survivor. I mean, look mm-hmm. at the lives that we've led, and we're here today. So, yeah, we're we're doing okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Um, you know how you're talking about words, right? You like words, and it's like everything that we do to shape our existence and our mindset, our framing is based on our beliefs, right? All right, so let's challenge our beliefs just a second. When we're worried about our bills, okay, mortgage comes in, electric bill comes in, and you take it and you're going, oh, my God, I don't know how I'm going to pay this, right? But if I come along and I put a $100 bill in your hand, what's the difference? They're both bills, right? Yep. So what's the definition? One is a bill and one is a bill. What makes this bill one that I have to pay and put put another bill there or or the other bill that's in my hand? They're both a bill. So you need to accept it as abundance. Just say thank you. Thank you very much. I got money coming in all over the place. And you got to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that's that's I think the bigger point of abundance is our birthright. When I said the thing about this bank creates a system that's debt, but the entire world, especially you know newscasters and financial advisors, will 
it's really bizarre. They just don't understand that concept that you can just eliminate that debt and that group of people that created it and magically told you that it has to be paid yep. off, Absolutely. they're going to be fine. Believe it or That's not, right. they're going to be fine, and the world's going to go on. And, mm-hmm. and they have just convinced you of, you know, that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, what you're saying sounds like it's a, a bill is a bill is a bill. Uh-huh. You know? Right. You, it's, I guess it's a matter of perspective. When you have this higher a perspective paper, really. <laughs> of acceptance or, yeah, you believe, you believe in it and you believe in abundance that it's going to uh, work out. Everything's going to be okay. They're exactly the same. Whether it's a one dollar bill, five, ten, a hundred, it doesn't matter. It's an IOU. All it is is a form of exchange that says IOU. So when that bill comes in, it's saying the same thing, IOU. So it's up to yeah. me to look at it like it's abundance. We're just circulating this abundance. You just say thank you. I got a hundred bucks today, or five hundred dollars today. Right on. Thank you. And believe oh, it. Well, that- <laughs> That's where I think we're heading. That's where we're heading. And That's right. to cross to cross over, I, I mentioned earlier material versus spiritual. You, you literally do have to think about that because material is stuff that matter is matter. It's not stuff that matters necessarily. It's matter is a collection of cells that create a mass that creates mm-hmm. matter. And you know, I was. I, I've written to somebody just the other day too about understanding uh, blessing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time to understand what the Holy Ghost was. Mm, tell me the definition. It, it, yeah, it's so <laughs> it. easy for me to. Yeah, I, I love that one. That, it, it seems like an abstract concept, and it's the same sort of thing with this bill. It's, it's once you understand it, it just makes perfect sense. Um, we're going into this higher vibration state. So the planet is ascending. People will call it climate change. Those that know what it is want you to be worried, and they just want to mm-hmm. keep trying to, to um, control you. Uh-huh. But you're just going to see things in a different perspective, okay? So dogs have a higher, uh, a different uh, depth perception Humans, we only have, we only see a little bit of the visible spectrum, and we only see the things that have sort of materialized. So where a dog has ultra high, like UV, ultraviolet percep- percept- perception, um, there, there's an, an, an analogy. They, they have high percep- perception. I say that. So take, take. We understand that. We accept that. Take that analogy. Animals see at different perceptions. A dog sees at a different perception. It has, you know, it knows you're coming from a mile away or whatever it is because it hears you somehow. Normal science can't explain what that is. So that's this sort of mystical realm that science doesn't understand right now. Okay, Mm -hmm. so animals do that. Take that to um, water or a duck in water or you and I jumping into a swimming pool. We know that we're going to jump into a lake of water, and we know that because, I don't know, we've experienced it before. It's material enough that it's solid, and we can run our hands into it. Birds, conversely, I'll use this analogy. When a bird jumps into the sky, it's jumping into the equivalent of jumping into a lake of water. It just knows it's going to be able to fly. So it's jumping into a different state of matter. This is which funny, is Jerry. Spiritual. Wait a minute. I hate to cut you off, but I have a um, <laughs> I have someone that joined us, and he wanted me to ask you: Is air matter? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It absolutely <laughs> is. So 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 that's 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 the big mystery. That's the Holy Ghost. That is the spirit. And that matter is infused, like we talked earlier, that everything is one and everything is just as important because that freaking matter, air, holds it all together. Mm-hmm. And I, I hate when science, another thing that they do in programming is they, they call it dark. We don't understand it, so it's dark matter. 
No, it's not. It's just the it's spirit. It's the spirit. Mm-hmm. It's a spiritual realm, and it's and and we know that something's there because you feel wind on your face when we send a wireless uh, um, call. We're sending something over a wavelength. The wavelength is traveling through air. It's traveling through the yeah. matter of air. But it is mm-hmm. so thin that it's not really perceptible to us, but it's around us all the time, and we're right. connected. So we're not moving through nothing. We're moving through this level, the sea of air, and that's exactly how wavelengths travel. That's how emotions travel. That's why that aura that's around you in a grocery store, your positivity travels down the cereal aisle to the old woman who's trying to reach up on the top shelf to grab oatmeal and she can't reach it. And you're sending out a positive wavelength Mm -hmm. to that person, just like a communication. And so how do we communicate with the Holy Ghost? And why is it the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Because angels are around us all the time. And they're able to communicate with us in that spiritual type of realm, in that spiritual matter. So that is actually this new paradigm that we're at. And there are some scientists that have measured what the size of that, of, of the spirit sort of atoms are that when I said the thing about the virus cell, it's just very, very small, but it's the same uh, design as the universe. So there is a quantum physicist out there. And and I guess that whole word quantum, quantum physics, is talking about this. So the ability, our our technology, we as a people have come to a place where we've got the technology, and it's taken a long time to get here, our whole human evolution to get to this point where we've got technology that now can measure the size of, of the smallest sort of uh, matter that we would call spirit or the spirit type of world. And that's this quantum space. So a lot, a lot of new developments will come out of that because we'll be able to fly like anti-gravity type of devices. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to be able, we're going to be able to communicate more with spirits because we are opening up to that channel, that channel of communication. And spreading love and evolving and going to a higher place mm-hmm. is where we're going, and, that, and that's why we're all going to be okay. So can I give you my definition? <laughs> I yeah, love sure. it. I'll put it in a nutshell. Okay, so the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? The Holy Spirit. So the Father is an energy field, okay? And that's the highest vibration. That's the subatomic particles are waiting for to manifest into creation. Then we have mm-hmm. the Son. The Son is the physical of the vibration, so the physical manifestation of love, and every step, every word, every action was in that behavior of love. He was modeling the Father, so that's why nobody can get to the subatomic particles, to that energy field, unless they go through me, is what Jesus said. You have to be able to mimic, be like him, in order to get to that field and be the creator. So now we have the Father and the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. So in, uh, in the book, Thomas, it says, you know, you can, you can um, speak ill against my Father, and it'll be okay, and of the Son, and it'll be okay. But if you speak ill against uh, the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven, not in this life and not in another. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in that Holy Spirit, um, it's the Holy Spirit of information. So information is our concepts, our beliefs, our, you know, our, the vibration that comes from the heart out through the mouth, the words that we choose, the, um, the aura that we carry, that signal to the lady getting the oatmeal, all that stuff is being sent through the field of information to be received by another uh, being of matter. So that whole, that spirit of information, when we, a sin against ourself, okay, when we misbehave, we, when there's self-loathing or a lack of self-love in whatever meant, you're sinning against yourself and you won't be forgiven. That's, that is the, the, the highest 
um, purpose for us here is to learn how to love ourselves, because through loving ourselves, everything else is fulfilled. That's why we need to go back and do that. We really need to understand how to do this thing. So the Holy Spirit of information, think about it. When you go into meditation, when you need an answer, when you send a vibration out that says, thank you for this bill, I appreciate it because you believe it, you're telling the universe what you want out of this life. This is what I expect. This is what I'm calling on. I'm the creator. And the Holy Spirit says, you are. Okay, guys, let's get busy. (laughs) 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 And life gets so magical. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Actually, that corresponds to uh, the same principle. It it totally does because it's sort of, you said, it's where you signal and where you send your communication. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the idea is that, you know, it is a communication field that you send your thoughts, and that's why mm-hmm. that's why your group, you know, your followers are a community, and they've got collective consciousness. They're mm-hmm. conscious. What what they're thinking of that higher vibrational love energy creates like a web, a worldwide web. Right. That you're all kind of con- connected, and I'm connected now to the listeners too. So I'm sending a message and receiving the message as well, and we're all kind of creating our communications, our consciousness. And if we are collectively saying that, like you said, the virus isn't a real thing, collectively, we're going to, you know, be more empowered than that thing. Um, yeah, eradicate it. Don't believe in it. Don't put any energy toward it. Bless it and release it. Yeah, in, in, in that in that that state in that field, which science will start calling quantum fields or uh, consciousness, there are possibilities and probability. So, what your intentions are, you're trying to put out. There, there's limitless, limitless, limitless possibilities supposedly that exist there, and that, that would make sense because the Creator, God of creation, has every single possibility in there. You're part of that creation, so you have influence or input in it. So whatever your mental sort of bearings are, you're going to put out a possibility that you want to see manifest. So you're playing with probability. So now, since you've claimed a space, I'm going to walk away from negativity. I'm not going to listen to what that negative person said to me, or I don't believe in that, and I'm going to believe in love, and I love myself enough to give myself the gift of love. Mm. And you're going to tip the scale into the probability that your you know, best outcome is going to manifest. Mm-hmm. And that goes out into the universe, and it is sort of heard, and, and those yeah. angelic be- beings that are watching over you, they're going to, like, shuffle along that thought because they love you and they want to it's give you really back an incredible. answer. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then the universe has to recreate itself to answer you. And if you do believe, then you will see. You don't have to see to believe it. And then, but mm-hmm. after you see it, then you'll start believing it even more. And that happens step after step after step after step. When you start claiming this space, then you're mm-hmm. on a tra- trajectory, right? You're just Correct. down a path. Mm-hmm. And then, then it becomes a skill of, you know, defending your position and realizing, oh, here comes a negative thing at me. I'm going to push that to the side. And it's neat. It, it, in that sense, you just be, you become a master of your own sort of, destiny right that you become the master of your own destiny absolutely so i mean think about it i mean in reverse i mean if if all we ever believed what was right in front of us we would never get anywhere and the fact that you know being born and you're changing through every single year growing changing growing changing learning it's it's happening right before your eyes so what makes you think that you can't grow into whatever it is you decided you wanted to be you can't just look around at your surroundings and say, well, you know, um, 
I live in the city, so I can never live in the country. I don't know. Of course you can. You can do anything you want to do. It doesn't matter where your surroundings are at this moment. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter your, your financial stability at this moment or your education at this moment. You can take one step toward um, manifesting the belief, be it today. Grab a hold of it. I, I want to be that, that famous basketball player. Grab a hold of it and own it today, wherever you are in your life. That's what I am. I am that I am. I am a basketball player. Yeah, me too. I am that I am. Exactly. Well, with everything you do, have, you have to put the work into it. So <laughs> saying it is one thing, but you got to like – put some work into yeah, it. Yeah, you got to put one foot in front of the other. Well. You have to actually believe it. If you believed it, you don't up to it. You know what I mean? It, it's like yeah. if somebody yeah. says, I'm going to make you the CEO of my company, you can't just be like, all right, I'm going to sit on the couch. Go ahead. You have to you have to rise to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that takes work sometimes. But, you know, you can be in anything you want. To be, set your mind into that direction. And especially now, the powers of manifestation are happening more and more and more. Oh, God. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it's certainly that we should have, uh, you know, a, a confidence, first of all, in yourself and then claim these birthrights because mm-hmm. you weren't born into this world to be somebody's slave. You were nope. born into this world to be a creator yep. and to live this life. And it is, it's a game. Do you still go by uh, the premise, the game? Is, is that sort of? Oh, of yes. That? Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Very strongly. Um, that's coming out shortly. I've got a big surprise. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm excited. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's I'm basically it. it's, it's basically our instruction. So I'm going to help you get there. I'm going to help you become one. After we're born, remember I was saying after we're born, we become two. And that ego that we have and the Holy Spirit of information, possibility, and pure love, we're going to go back to that so we can create that life that we are dreaming of. But we need instruction. And we need it dumbed down. You know, because we really do have the instruction, but we don't understand it. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes it's just explaining it and giving people sort of milestones on that on that path. Go go to this place first, try this exercise, play this game this way. And I said it earlier, you have knowledge, gather some knowledge, you're going to be told how to do it. Maybe you'll have an exercise. To me, that sort of is the game. And then when you get to that wisdom that you, you've had a few of those experiences, then then you're at that point where you're winning that game more often. And, and especially when you claim your space, you're going to be pretty solid. Hey, have you ever heard mm-hmm. the idea of um, the mental bodies and the physical body, the emotional body and the spiritual body? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Ha- Let's talk about it. That- We've got time. <laughs> well, that, that's really helped me a lot. You know, I know you've got teenagers, I believe, and I've got a teenage boy. And I've for a while been kind of breaking him in on that idea that you've got mm-hmm. a physical body, an emotional body, a mental body, and a spiritual body. Mm-hmm. So the physical body, you know, that's the one that, you know, kind of – takes care of itself, it, it's physical. It's easy to understand the physical body, all your your skin and bones. But the mental body, you know, that centers mostly sort of around your brain and uh, what you learn, all the cognitive type of stuff. And then there's the, spir- the um, emotional body. That's a little bit more so your heart. And, and each of these bodies, they sort of like have a brain into, in and of themselves. Because well, I guess it's the subconscious. Your your um, physical body just knows how to operate. You don't have to consciously think, oh, breathe right now. Right. Not exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when you interact with your spiritual body, it usually tends to be in meditation or prayer or dream time. So if you get to know those bodies a little bit more, um, there's um, a couple great techniques 
to just like breathe or do like Tai Chi or do yoga, that really gets you tuned up to your physical body and understanding that school reading the mental stuff. Everybody understands the mental stuff, the emotional body that takes a lot of work. And I guess I wanted to bring this up. The point to me is that those bodies evolve at different, they grow up at different um, speeds sometimes. That's why you can have uh, the notion of a man child, right? You've got Mm -hmm. a, a, a boy who's got arrested development in a man's body. It could mm-hmm. be a 30-ish year old kind of man, but they've got arrested development. And emotionally, if they didn't have the tools or good examples, then they're not going to be at the same place. So it, it's just kind of good to sort of think about it for yourself. But when you're dealing with other relationships, think about you know, how that works with other people that you're dealing with. What do you think about those? Yeah. Um, You know, if we could all get into that that spiritual body and really take that a little more seriously and give it love and care, that's where the magic is. That's really where the magic is. You you just, I, that's my favorite place to be. And um, I look forward to it. I love going to sleep. (laughs) I love meditating and I love going to bed. (laughs) Oh wow! Well, I want to hear more about that. Oh well, yeah, do you, I just do you um, like just resting, or or do you have active dreams? What's happening? Um, well, both. I've actually had, um, you know, I can tell the difference between like a regular dream and a premonition, and um, it has just been fascinating. I mean, just like wow, okay, you know, I I I receive that. And those those premonitions are the things that I can remember. Dreams, you know, I'm lucky if I can remember them after I wake up. But in either case, when I call it a night and I go to bed, I am just like so in love with life. I'm just so in love with the idea of I get to leave my awakened state to go into my dream state, you know, and still play with the angels, you know, and, and be somewhere else. And this, <laughs> I just love it. Same with meditation. I just love the idea of going into that space where you're a creator. Why would you ever give that up? Uh, it's it's definitely a part of you. You have to integrate with it, and you can you can get a lot of information. It's sort of like your subconscious sort of takes over, and when you're in a dream state, when you're dreaming, when you're sleeping, your subconscious sometimes you talk about premonitions. It sometimes it sees everything, right? It, it, it takes mm-hmm. in the whole landscape. It, when they when they talk about people having their life flash in front of their eyes, some people that you know go through those type of traumas, mm-hmm. I think your 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 brain is just recording all that stuff, and your subconscious can access that. So, my wife a couple of years back had donated to. Um, public radio station locally, and we went to sort of like a hypnotherapist. I think his name was Chris Howard. And it was an interesting sort of – it was like self-empowerment type of workshop, seminar stuff. But put us into what hypnosis is, is just being in a meditative – it's a particular brainwave type of a state. I think it's theta. Mm. And you you get into that same brainwave when you're – in a different cycle of sleep. So that's when you're having dreams or you're able to sort of activate or or get into your subconscious. So one way of practicing sort of understanding your dreams a little bit more is right when you wake up, you're still sort of in between being awake and still being asleep that you can right away say, um, where was I and what was I doing? And just repeat that to yourself before you're fully awake. Where was I? What was I doing? Where was I? What was I doing? And the dreams, the little remnants of it will come back to you. And then you can write that down. If you do write that down, there's a language supposedly of dreams where the more you do it, the more you're training yourself to remember 
your dreams. It's just kind of what we said about the life path, having experiences. The more you experience writing down little parts of your dreams, your body's conditioning itself to remember more of your dreams. And there's a lot of, yeah, there is a lot of, you know, higher planes, spiritual connections that you'll make in your dream times and in your meditations. In your meditations, you were talking about the uh, the um, quantum, the spirit world, that little sort of voice in your head sometimes or that tapping on your shoulder that like perks you up when you're in meditation sometimes. That's, I think, part of that, you know, working in that spiritual type of world. That's why you have that spirit body. It it's allows you to connect to your higher self and to higher, higher planes or angels. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. I do that in my waking hours. So all throughout oh, my cool, whole cool. day. Yeah. I am, I am in um, communion. I'm going to say with my angels and I'm mm-hmm. always very receptive to the messages. So I, when I find um, like, let's say a penny or when I find uh, there's an absolute message that means something to me. I'm just like, oh my gosh, there's my confirmation. I have to go back and oh, ask wow, myself, wow. what was, yeah, what was I thinking about in this moment? Because I just got confirmation. Huh. And uh, yeah, it's really phenomenal. And then um, I also have a book that I have created, and I take that penny, I come back and put it in that book, and that book is full of messages for my life. And I put it in oh, my wow. book, and it. Yeah, and it it just affirms what's going on in my life. And it's just been nothing short of magical. So, yeah, and then as far as the meditation for me, you know, I don't don't go into meditation to go into my subconscious. I go into meditation to connect to the field. So when I connect to the field, yeah, I'm, I'm more open to that download, whatever it is that the message that I'm to get. And, and that's how the book came to be. That's literally how the game came into play. Wow. Wow. That's Mm. pretty awesome. So that, that um, meditative state is the same vibrational state as the field. So that's why you can, uh, people that look into the Akashic records Mm -hmm. or, you know, those shamans, they, they try to get into a heightened state it, it's just if, if you're more of a master and you can control yourself, your breathing and your relaxation, then you can supposedly get into that sort of space and you will sort mm-hmm. of receive messages. How long has that been happening for you? Does that go back to when you were ten years old? How long has has what been happening for me? Have you have you been able to like sort of pick up something and know that there was some sort of message there? You're you're getting some sort of messages. Oh, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. And I never question it. I just follow direction. Follow the order. I, I just, and amazing things happen. I, all day long, I, I just sit there and go, wow, who can I share this with? Who can I share this with? You know, <laughs> Jerry, we could talk forever. <laughs> We've got about a minute left and this thing will cut us off. So I appreciate you coming on and giving us, I mean, what a great conversation we had. And, I hope the listeners um, got some nuggets there because there were a lot of them. Yeah, that was super cool. Really fun for me. You know, I love you lots and thank you and honor you and bless you for the work that you're doing. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you. Love you. And again, we can find you at prepareforchange.net or somewhere else. You'll see some interviews there. Yes. And the name of the book that will come out is The Homeschooling of Jasper Wells. Oh, so okay. The homeschooling. Jer- I missed that part. <laughs> homeschooling no, 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 of know, Jasper I Wells. Is. I love it. Yeah, it's, I love it. Pretty it. Okay. Well, yeah. And sorry, I don't want to cut it off. Okay. Uh, it yep. absolutely will be. After this conversation, yeah, more to come. <laughs> all right, Jerry. Right, have we'll a wonderful night. My time. listeners have a wonderful night. I love you all. And um, Jerry, we'll talk again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jerry. Good luck, Jerry. Bye bye. Stay calm. And there we are.